Hola a todos. Desde Planet Tuna... Hi everyone. At Planet Tuna, we've created this video to explain the workings of the ICAT, the International Commission for the Conservation of Atlantic Tuna. This is where decisions are made to guarantee the sustainability of the fishing industry, which affects us all. Let's jump in. We all agree that the oceans are one of the major sources of food on the planet, and that for this to continue to be the case, the fishing industry has to be regulated and monitored, because no one wants this resource to run out. Who's in charge of doing this? There are a series of international organizations that, based on scientific data, act as managers and as advisors to make sure that there are enough fish, both for catching and so that they can continue to reproduce. In other words, to ensure sustainability. The ICAT is one of these organizations. It manages the tuna and other migratory fish of the Atlantic and its seas, the Mediterranean, the Black Sea and the Caribbean. There are 53 members and the decisions they make are based in part on what the scientists tell them. Among these many scientists are the researchers of the Spanish Institute of Oceanography. And how is it done? By estimating abundance. That is, by trying to answer the question, how many fish are there in the sea? The answer is essential if we want to know how many fish we can catch. But it's not easy. Let's imagine some scientists in Kenya counting, oh, I don't know, elephants. Hmm. And now let's imagine some scientists in the Atlantic counting tuna. Estimating population numbers in the sea is a lot more difficult, so it requires collecting a lot of data. What data do the scientists use to estimate abundance? They use two kinds of sources. Each member of ICAT has to report how much they've caught for each species, and the scientists then analyze this data. And the scientists' own data, based on studies of biological factors and abundance indexes, like, for example, the larval index, which allows them to estimate how many breeding fish there are based on the number of fish larvae observed in a certain quantity of water. This is a bit easier than watching the ocean surface, isn't it? Now that we understand a bit about how these calculations are carried out, let's look at how the organization works and how decisions are made. First, scientists work with these and with a lot of other data in the annual meeting of experts of each species, the experts from NGOs and representatives of the fishing industry who can also participate. Here we see the experts from the swordfish group, from the bluefin tuna group or from the tropical tuna group, among which is the big eye or Tunus abessus. It's a less well-known cousin of the bluefin tuna, but it's in high demand and in fact is already showing signs of overfishing. Broadly speaking, what they do is to agree on what they consider important for the conservation of the species and after reaching consensus, they write up a scientific report. Now these will just be recommendations, but the process is on its way. The recommendations go to an ICAT committee, the Standing Committee on Research and Statistics, which approves the reports and creates a mega-report with the most complete and current statistics on the ICAT species. They pass it along to the Secretariat, which is a kind of general distributor of information. Among other things, it receives all the reports, translates them, edits them, and organizes them for the Commission. And finally, it's time for the annual commission meeting. There are about 800 people present between scientists, NGOs, fisheries, and representatives from the member countries who arrive with the SCRS reports under their arms. The representatives from the member countries are the ones who are going to do the negotiating. In order to make decisions, dialogue is essential. They will spend eight days reviewing the situation and proposing measures for each species. Only when all the countries reach consensus will they agree to a series of measures that everyone will be obliged to follow. They don't always reach an agreement, and in that case, the previous measures will stay in place for one more year. Here are some of the measures. Some of them will sound familiar. The minimum size that can be fished. For example, bluefin tuna have to weigh at least 30 kilos. The obligation to report everything that's caught and the famous fishing quotas, which are the maximum number of tons of a species that can be fished per year. ICAT manages many species, large and small tunas, bonito, sharks, swordfish, marlins, and there are equivalent organizations in the rest of the world's oceans. And with this video, we've seen how important they are, 
and how they base their decisions, at least in part, on scientific information. It's complicated, but necessary, to find a balance between the management measures, fishing, and the need for food in order to guarantee the sustainability of the fish populations.